uh, use the time that we have remaining in a powerful way. Lord, you are glorified in a church that is being transformed to be more like their Savior. And so, Lord, we ask that you do that this morning, that you transform us, that you would renew our minds in your word, and that as we sing to you, that the words that we are about to sing would really be um, our prayer to you, that we would have a heart to praise you, our God. And so, Lord, that is our prayer, and that's our song this morning, and we yes. offer it up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'd like to invite up the musicians, and we'll sing this together, congregation, without the choir. The Church of God. It is our topic. It's our privilege to not only to learn, but to be part of it. <coughs> and I welcome you back to the last part of our Sunday service. And our favorite part is to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord in the Word of God and the Spirit of God. As you know, we've been, we going, we have, we have been going through, even now this morning, <clears throat> the theological, major theological doctrine, cover major points of, of a faith, and now we are covering the concept, the doctrine, the point of the Church of God. <clears throat> As to share a little bit before we get into it, when I was a lot, a lot younger. I look at all those topics I enjoy growing, learning, uh, was so, and still I am, hungry to learn Christianity, to learn doctrine, to learn our faith, to learn the Bible. One of which I clearly remember since a very early in my early age of um, Christian walk and the biological life. <clears throat> I was fascinated, I was so passionate about, and I'm still, the doctrine, the major doctrine of our faith, theological doctrine, doctrine of faith. However, way back then, this is close to 40 years now, I look at all those topics, the topic of the Church of God was my least interest. And uh, I have to say, and uh, 
No, it's not Cambodian, not English either. And I know now, then, and more and more now, that I was completely wrong. Every topic of every major doctrine, of the theological doctrine of faith, is all important equally. But way back in my younger age, and a lot more foolish than I am now, I look at the doctrine of the nature of God, the doctrine of salvation, more importantly, rightly so. And the Church of God are ah, just a Church of God because I did not have much knowledge for sure of the grace from God that was fault on me, was falling on me. I didn't absorb very much back then, was foolish. And on the contrary, I was not too impressed by the church, not the church of God, but the church around me. So I was, I had a really hard time dealing with the passion about the church and mingle with, mixed up with and confuse my own stupidity, the church and the church of God. So sadly, didn't think, of, didn't know that correctly, didn't honor, didn't value that properly, which I repent from that, which I have grown since more and more. On a positive side, I am so blessed to understand, to know, to value, to thank God for this doctrine, the Church of God, because the Church of God involved God himself. Therefore, so I, am, I would be so foolish to look at the Church of God anything less than the doctrine of God. On the contrary, even more complex, the Church of God is even more important, now that I'm going <laughs> the other extreme, no, not that, but to my understanding, I need to put more attention than I used to, because this is not only the topic that talks about God, but to talk about the properties of God involve human beings, involve us, involve sinners who are redeemed and forgiven and graced by God to be part of his mission, his project, and his properties and his identity. Therefore, the topic of the Church of God is very important. If anything, at all equally important to any topic. Complicate is as complicates as any topic. So, <clears throat> with that said, I want you to pay attention and to focus and to understand that this topic and any other topic, scriptures, your faith, your God, your Savior, your soul, your sin, your temptation, your growth, your blessing. All of this as Christian, even if you, let's say you're not Christian, even if you're not Christian, but as individual human being, intelligent individual, that growing up as a person, you are to utilize, you are to pay attention to the faculty, to, intel to the intelligence God given you, to know, to understand, to sharpen your thinking, your soul, your mind, as a person. Because in our society, <clears throat> in our nature, we became, become dull, useless, empty, at best, and then fallen, destroyed by sin and temptation and the world system. So be careful how you utilize your memory, your mind, your nature, your heart, your soul, your body. Be careful. We have enough problems outwardly pressure in and inwardly pressure out. Both in and out, we have enough challenge that could have sent us to hell if there's no grace of God. How much more now that you are on your own will, 
humanly speaking, free will, personally, follow God, believe in Jesus Christ as Lord God and Savior, call yourself Christian. Call yourself Christian. What should you do then, since you call yourself Christian and decide to be follower of God, decide to become Christian? And we do know that, theologically speaking, God, the one who has chosen you by grace you to have faith, giving you grace to have faith, giving you grace to believe in him. Yes, God caused that. But those two aspects, two concepts have to go together alongside, not one or the other. So I'm encouraging you to examine to be careful with your mind, your spirit, and your heart, your thought, your body. Ultimately, your faith, your promise, your word to God, to Jesus. So, it's important. And I'm not ridiculously push you to become a crazy religious world you uh, a, as a human being, B, as a teenager or a young person growing up. No, I'm not. I'm just asking you to reasonably think about your decision, your word, your thought, your action as a Christian, part of the Church of God, and part of this church. Enjoy life. Enjoy life, by all means but enjoy life one way or the other. One way or the other, you cannot have both. You cannot have the world, and you cannot have God. You can have God living in the world, but you cannot have the world living in God. You cannot do that. The church of God. As I mentioned this morning, I am blessed beyond my ability to express. I am so blessed as a sinner, as a person, especially I live long enough now to experience more heartaches and headaches, troubles and sorrow, pain and ache, physically, mentally, spiritually, than when I was younger. Not that I didn't have them, but I was just young and healthy and stronger and foolish. Didn't really feel much about problem. Wisdom and life that God grant me to understand, not so much, but enough to know I am grateful to be a child of God, to be a Christian, to be forgiven by the grace of God, which I don't deserve, and to be placed in the church of God. I am so grateful, as I mentioned, I'm so blessed to be in this church, local church, specifically this local body here. I'm grateful to be placed in the Church of God universally, part of God's children. Specifically, locally, barley, regionally, here in this church. Sometime, Go to the mental stage, discourage, just like anyone else, maybe more. Because the thing that I wish, the thing that I want, the thing I desire, not met. Sometimes, not along with God's will, sometimes it is, but either way, as a person, especially living in the society, li living in this, physical society and, and world that compete for bigger and better and richer and this and that and glamorous and I am sometime, to be honest, discouraged. But I refocus my spirit, my mind, my view, my perception and my heart to the church of God, what God intend to be, what the Bible teaches in the right doctrine, interpretation, right mind, I am blessed. Therefore, I share with you this morning, I am blessed to be in this church. I'm blessed to be part of the younger generation, younger group, although I am not very much anywhere close to that group anymore. 
as they approach, I'm getting further and further. But I see the blessing of the future in this church and your young people. I'm blessed, and I'm blessed to see teacher and leaders and pastors and elders and deacon that God raised. By all means, this is a small church. Therefore, the portion, and not the portion, the ratio, the ratio, the percentage of this small number is small, yeah. However, I do not look at number as a church as a whole or number, the ratio or the percentage of uh, in human ignorant or personal agenda or presupposition. I must look at it logically, mathematically, and scripturally. Look at the blessing from God in this specific given grand church here. Therefore, I am fully blessed. Though we have one or two a small number of people as general, um, I mean the members of the whole church, and therefore the ratio and percentage of that become leader small. I am totally blessed by that. I am blessed to see leaders like Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave. I fully, wholeheartedly, confidently praise God and commend Pastor Dave for being a godly man, a godly husband, a godly brother and friend, a godly servant of God. And uh, it's not something you can say every day to everybody. You cannot go to any church and say that. There are godly men out there, godly leaders out there, but do you have the privilege to go in and say that I am so proud to have all these godly men in this, my dear, you're not, not your church. You can say, um, praise God, I'm proud of that church. Of, uh, yes, but does it apply to you and your church directly and practically? No. You can only limit it to praise God, to thank God, to, to, to credit them. But how about your own humble home here? Yeah, you have to deal what, 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 with what you have here. You can look at big, fancy restaurant and family and wealthy people, how, what they eat in the kitchen and so on. Yeah, you look at a display, beautiful and delicious and whatnot. But does it fill your stomach, your tummy? No. It fills your joy, your heart, your eye to see that. However, it create craving for that. Therefore, it's absolutely not really anything practically beneficial to you and to me. But when you look at your own humble home, your own kitchen, your own table, your own dining table, your own wife, your own family, your own um, dinner, whatever we have, that moment may not be the same compared to fancy restaurant, luxury home. But compared to what we have on our, at, on our table, at home, what we have to eat, to enjoy, and your mind is correct, you focus on your own herbal, whatever it is, that is something to praise God because having that, not having that, having nothing, that is a real test, the real comparison. Enjoy your own humble home, food and drink and family. Therefore, that illustration, same thing. Enjoy your blessed church. Enjoy your members, your brothers and sisters, your leader, your teacher, your elder, your deacon. Those who labor hard day and night to serve God with the best of their ability, though you may have something sinfully to criticize them, you may have something ridiculously unfairly to judge them, they should have done this, you can, of course you can, and you look long enough, everybody is as hellish and stupid and ugly and bad and this, yeah, but is that right? Is that the right perspective and is right. Is that what God wants us to do or you want to look for? 
<coughs> something that you a can praise God for what you little you have herbal and maybe vegetarian the the other day, but better than no nothing. And then you might look for the opportunity not to appreciate or to be thankful, but to be part of that little dinner to make it better. Or you just sit and criticize and complain and bickering about when is it going to be done? Oh, so that's all we eat? Not that I haven't done that. I do that all the time. That's sin. Sin in, in every way around. That's only an illustration. But it's in life. What we have, what job, what family, what life, what whatever. As we can look for negative, we find negative. Wow, what a fire, what a um, destructive disease to eat up something like this. Or we look for the opportunity to be thankful and to be supportive, to be positive, to be pleasant, to be edifying, to be honoring, to be building one another up. Those who lead us and those who follow us, that's a good example. And those who are our peers, the brothers and sisters, the, the, the molecule that we all stick together becomes solid. Become strong, united in one body. Or we just cancer cell. It's a cell, it's a cancer cell that's eating up the whole body and then we all die. And the cancer cell doesn't care because it's cancer's the nature is to kill and to die even it dies, it kills itself because it's eating the whole body and die too. And that's what their mission is to kill, to destroy. But for healthy cells, they use a joint cancer cell, and that is something weird, something wrong. Are you doing anything to fight to support the body? And that is what I'm saying that the Church of God is very, very important for us to understand the blessing and our position, our duties, our privilege duty and proclamation of what God gave us. One, to God. Two, to one another. Three, to give that blessing to other. How can we stand and proclaim the blessing of God to us for our church if we don't even see it that way? And the growth of the church, not necessarily the number, but the number is important as well. We cannot just say, oh, I don't care, small church as long as we grow in the faith. And, and that's kind of, that's good. That's good, but it has its place that the body of Christ in physical in number must grow. You cannot just say and die. And we need to pray about, to think about, it, and to be active about our church growth, both spiritual, internal, and physical, I mean numbers and external. Meaning evangelism is a command from God. We need to evangelize. We need to bring the gospel to the lost, and we need to grow our church. Of course, there are pe people, men, may growth and numbers and this and that which make the concept of church growth, church, um, uh, yeah, church growth become something kind of sour and you can't almost shy away from it and make you toss out the baby with the dirty bath water. It's bad. We have to distinguish between what is dirty and what is not, what is dead, what is life. We must preserve life, we must destroy disease and death and destruction. The church of God is important to God and to the church itself and to each one of us. As I mentioned again, I'm blessed to be in this church. I'm blessed to be with part of you, young generation, and I'm blessed to be part of the leadership here. And I pray that God will bless his church.
as a whole. I pray that God will bless you young people. Every aspect of your life. I know you enjoy life. You're growing up, you have study, you have school, you have work, you have music, you have fun, you have food, you have romantics, yeah, I was looking for that word. You have this love. That's fine. It's all good. Live it. But priority, but focus on all of that should honor God. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm blessed to be part of seeing you all growing up, be part of, have the purpose to lead you. And then I'm blessed to be part of this leadership, both male and female, both elders and deacons, and namely be part of friend and family and serving God with, with Pastor Dave. The memory to pass it. <laughs> just kidding. Like, where is he going? What is that? No, he's not dying. He's not going anywhere. It's like, thank God for Pastor Day. Cannot say enough. Why? I know why Pastor Day. Why I thank God for the church? Because the church of God is a property of God. And he said the church of God, as Jesus mentioned in Matthew 16, 18, is a proclamation, it's a promise that we ought to understand how privileged, how much blessing that we're part of it. Before that, we looked at the prelude or the introduction to the concept of how powerful, how strong, in the practical responsibility and application of the Church of God we saw in the book of Judge, the book of Judges. <clears throat> Judge chapter 5, <clears throat> <clears throat> was two to five. And clearly, this fascinating passage that I never in my a million years to see, to draw the principle, the application, to apply to the, my own life in the church of God, in this local church of God, until the Lord opened it up to me by his spirit in the word of God itself. I stumble upon this one. To be honest, it's not my knowledge or my ability to go, to, oh, I, I just really go to the book of Judge chapter five or two and five and talk about this concept of unity and strength and blessing and evangelism and, oh yeah, no, any day with breakfast. Yeah, no, 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 no. Purely, a blessing from God that I humbly receive and share with you what I learned from him. Now I sharing pass it on to you. The principle behind the properties of God, whether the nation of Israel or the church of God. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ in New Testament in our time. But this principle apply everything that belongs to God. And we can learn from this passage the principle, the teaching, the idea, the concept here to apply our church and anything and everything involved, people, us, life, community, and family, and entity. Therefore, I am grateful for this passage. Let me read through real quick and we go and then we cover main point, a way of review, and I'm going to pound on it. I'm going to draw it, take it home, and apply it together. Judge chapter 5, verse 2 to 5, that the leaders took the lead in Israel, that the people offered themselves willingly for those unity, for those united mission, they all bless the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. You see that? That's amazing. Wow, I can just read this for the rest of my life. I cannot get sick and tired or weary reading this. Because ultimate end for all mankind, whether believer or not, to bless the Lord, to praise God. 
On the one side, praise God and bless the Lord with blessing from God back. The other side, praise the Lord and bless the Lord with cursing on them. Therefore, our ultimate end, the chief end of mankind is to bring glory to God. There's no better to bring glory to God with the community of people who lead a sacrifice to defend the family, the, the, the body, to praise God, and the follower or the members or people or the sheep. I mean, this concept, this people of Israel, join the leader, willingly, united, move forward to praise God, to bless God together. There's no better place to be in a place that's so solid, so united, so loving, so caring, so, so, so faithful to God and to one another. The concept of protection, concept of safety. And I cannot say enough in this world, in this world, whether business, or personal relationship, or relationship, friendship, or even in the religious setting, the worst thing is betrayal. The worst thing is to stab each other, to kill each other, to conspire, thing to destroy each other, yet call ourselves whatever it is, the entity, and then slowly dying like silent cancer. Nothing worse than that. Nothing worse than that. Personal relationship, religious relationship, church or business or whatnot, or nation is uh, we are good, natural, and good to destroy each other. But here, you see the united, solid, one body in willingness, in free will, in committed spirit to praise God. So that very important principle. Because of that, the flows coming out from verse 2 that hear, O kings of the earth, give ears, O princes, princes, not princes, to the Lord I will proclaim, I will sing praise, I will proclaim the worship of my God, basically, not singing in a musical, artistic way. This is a lot more than that. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Clearly, not just any God, the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, Jesus Christ himself the God of the Old and New Testament. I sing praise, I glorify God in the midst of not only this physical world and this culture, but in the midst of powerful individuals or groups or society that the world deem high. Let me tell you. Yes, the world may say, may agree, and it's rightly so that you are kings and princes and celebrity and educated and all of that, rich and wealthy and famous. Let me tell you, my God, the God of Israel, deserve all praise, not you. I respect you, yes. I respect you. I do not sinfully wrongly do anything against you to incriminate me to become not only a criminal or sinner, but I will not bow to you. Let it be clear to you, O king, you have your right on this earth and this world. I respect, I acknowledge, I recognize, but for me to bow, surrender to you, Absolutely not. I will bow and worship the God of Israel only. A strong testimony, a group of people proclaim this such a powerful, solid, uncompromising lifestyle unless you have a strong church or a strong body, a strong nation like verse 2. 
You cannot go to battle without being totally trained, totally united, totally equipped. You cannot. You get out there, you get slaughtered. You face again kings and princes, all this world, no commoners, no villagers. You, you face against, you go against warriors, leaders out there, vicious, powerful, rich, cunning, smart, intelligent, and every way from business to education to knowledge to high IQ. Talking about those people who are not believers. And what do you think they're going to do to you who are Christian unless you're not Christian? Unless you're part one of them, you are just the spy, the espionage. But if you are not one of them, you are the people who praise God, to honor God, to worship God, to love God, to commit your life for God, and you go out there, you think twice what you're going to do. Go against them, you're going to get crushed. The only way that you can stand against those people with such powerful, such confidence, such testimony to the world, especially against all warriors or all kings and princes in the world system, is to be part of strong body, strong, protective, and a power and a grace of God the Almighty, or Yahweh, that we talk about here. Without that blessing, you cannot again, you can't go against those people. You go and get slaughtered. They rip you to pieces. They slash you and slice you. And they, they squeeze your life out of you. They take every blood and every coin that you have. They kill you. Do not trust the world. Do not trust even if it looks good. There's no promise from a pagan, from God haters, can ever be a blessing to anyone, especially to believers. They do not think, think twice to destroy each other, even their own family. What do you think they're going to do to us? They will destroy us. However, we can stand strong, such as the Spirit right here, because we have the blessing from God. How do we know? We know because our, our life, our soul, our inner person being personally and all together as one body, praise God and bless God. If you have that connection that you praise God, you bless God in everything you think, you say you do, alone or together with your family, your group, your church, you can count on that you can say, Hear, O kings, respectfully, but I will not worship you. I worship my God in front of you. I have to understand in the culture, a certain culture, a certain time period than another, for you to worship God in front of this emperor and this king, they will slaughter you, they will execute you. However, Christianity lived for thousands of years in spite of all persecution. How come? Why? Does it make sense? Especially the first four centuries, Christianity was just sort of completely Judeo, uh, Judeo Christian were at worst time of human history. The nation of Israel was stroke crushed, but God would not let it die. God allowed that for many reasons. It's not a time for me to talk about that, but for sure for his purpose. And the other part, because Israel deserved punishment because they often, often dishonored God. I'm not against the nation of Israel as a whole. I'm talking about historically. And even now, they kill, they crucify, they join with the pagan to kill the prince of life. That alone. But God keep his promise. Such powerful character, no matter what, he keep his promise. That's his pure grace, pure love, pure sovereignty. God does that, we should love the nation of Israel as well. I'm not here politically to support Israel. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about theologically Israel is a chosen nation. God protect them. Now go to the church. 
the church of God, our church, this church stand because God grace. Our church part of the universal church stand because God grace. We stand because God stand with us. If God stand with us, no one who can go against us. But the question, us call ourselves Christian cause a part of the church of God in general, universal and local. What have we decide or done be part of that church? whether universally or locally, for that church, for that God that we call God and Savior and King and Master and Lord, what have we done? What have we decided? What have we committed? Ultimately, yes, that all great to church and God, but, but practically, at least, what have we decided and done for it? Our soul, our soul, our self, our soul, ultimately we live with it, we face it. No one else but us. Can your soul seriously and honestly say, here, O kings, or oh, here's my peers, my classmate, to put it very, very low. Here's friends. Forget the kings and princes here, classmate or teammate or work, whatever. To my God I pray, to my God I sing, to my God I worship, my God, my Lord, my Savior. I like you, I care for you, I work with you or whatnot, but there's limit. If I, you don't have to say it. But in your mind, if I have to choose between you and my God, I choose my God. If I choose between you and my church, I choose my church. If I have to choose you and my family, I choose my family. Isn't that natural? Unfortunately, what if the opposite? What if you worship the king of this earth, the king of the society, the king of this world, the king of this um, whatever, I don't know, list go on from wealth, from money, from education, to style, to Hollywood, and to entertainment industry, the music, the movies, whatever. And you let go of everything. You know, there are times in my life and my family, you are now, my children are, those times that we worship God on Sunday. <laughs> that time we worship God on Sunday, sounds like that. No, time that we normally worship, go to church on Sunday, and time that the children say, Daddy, um, I need to go, I, I like to go, I want to go. Is that okay? Is it not okay? It's up to you. I, I listen. You know, my children came to me and that um, at least they, Pretend not, they don't pretend. At least they say that, um, even if they have to go on. I feel blessed and comfort to decide one way or the other because the spirit is right. We have to compete in whatever competition was on Sunday, the only day that they do. I have to go do this, I have to, you know. It's tough, very difficult but at the same time comforted because I know their spirits, I know their hearts. Unlike you here in the church, in the church, in the church, in the church on Sunday, but your heart's not here before, during, and after church. That grieves me. Close to, I can almost say that close to killing me, close to equally dead. But God grace, I'm still alive mentally, spiritually, and physically. Otherwise, when I see my loved one, my family, my church, myself, betray God, worship other kings and princes of this world, not only over God, but equally with God, that's killing me. How much more if we take side to worship kings and princes in the world, not equally, but over God. As a father, as a Christian, as a leader, as a minister, as a pastor, it is the worst thing you can do to me. 
No guilt trip, no pressure here. Sincere and honest testimony. It's okay. People choose what they choose to do. That's fine. Not the best. But liberal as it is. Liberal as it is. Your friend or enemy. Don't call friend if you are my enemy. Jesus said, friend, you come with a kiss. Call me rabbi, but you come to arrest me. Oh, do whatever you do. Do it now. Say it is this. Say as it is. So it's not only sad, but painful. So you make your own choice. As a father, father. Yeah, there's no other father here. <laughs> as a leader, as a pastor, as a friend, as a brother, as a Christian, I pray to God and I plead with you, choose life, not death. Choose God, not the world. Even if the world offer kings and princes and wealthy and world and education and promotion and luxury and vacation. I'm not against all that, I'm to play. You know what I'm talking about. You better choose carefully, because all temporal, all will die. There's a promotion, it will be a demotion. Trust me. There's wealth, there will be poverty. There's life, there will be death. Just a matter of time. We cannot escape it. This is forever a promise. And not just a promise. Psychologically, just like quasi hoping. We can testify both things, two things. One, in the word of God, solid stand that God will at the end throughout victorious. Even the gates of hell cannot prevail against God. Church, think about that. How can we not logically and intelligently choose God, church? How can we not? And let me be so utterly stupid. I'm not cussing. Certain language when you say stupid, you think, oh, you're cussing. No, I'm just saying the state of intelligence or mind or ability of one can be. How can we? How can we not? So it's important that we must utilize our cognitive, our mind, our, our, our ability to choose between life and death. Do not sacrifice a blessing, eternal blessing, on the altar of immediate, on the altar of the immediate. You burn it up. Worship, worship pagan, worship pagan God on the altar of the immediate. I will sing praise. I'll make melody to my Lord, my God, in front of all this glamorous. Can we then get promotion? Oh, absolutely. Can we get go on vacation, fishing trip, and happy? Can we get married? Can we uh, go to school? Can we earn money? Absolutely, but do it in the singing, the melody to the Lord, the praising God, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, not the God of the kings and princes can offer you. Do not get confused. The duty, that normal, that we have to do and love it. You do it whole, wholeheartedly to do whatever you study or go to work or whatnot, do it, but do not worship it. Worship God. Bless the Lord. United with the body of Christ, 
united with the leaders, united with your fellow brothers and sisters, united with those who follow you. You are the example. You are the role model. The leader leads, the follow follows. But they're all in one accord. They're all brothers and sisters. They're all peers. We all have different responsibility, duties, but we are peers. Those who follow us, they're not below us. They're just learning from us because we have the responsibility to lead them, but they are our brothers and sisters. Those who lead us, they have responsibility to lead us, but they are our brothers. They have weakness. They have, they have sin. They have struggle. They have needs like us. So love, respect them, but love and care for them as brothers and sisters committed to one another, willfully, passionately, to what? To praise God together, therefore you can stand against all enemy outside. That is a concept of united body in whatever it is, especially the church of God. We can learn a lot from that. The God of Israel the God of the Yahweh God, the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the same today and tomorrow. His operation for this, for that, for this time, for that time, may vary because his operation is dynamic, it's not static. But the principle, the person, the mission behind the overall, the big picture is the same thing. And someone says, are you saying uh, the nation of Israel and the church the same thing? I'm not talking about that. It's not. My position is not. But I'm talking about God bring a conclusion, the ultimate conclusion at the end of time to bring him glory, to bring him honor, along the way to bring him honor and glory, and at the end, same thing. That's never changed. Change, yes, from here to there, from this and that. Even with us alone, God changed from this. Isn't that God promised to, 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 to bless me, to protect me for all, all the way to the end of age and all the way? Yes, but there's something that can change in, within that rewarding punishing. Reward and punish can be varies according to the variation of our lifestyle and commitment respond to the God who bless us. He bless us in disciplining us. He bless us in rewarding us. They're both still rewarding. But things might be changed. It doesn't mean God changed, we change. For example, the sunlight, the heat and the sunlight still the same element and ray and effect and everything. What changes is when we were clay, or we, we can be clay or wax. We are clay, we become hard and strong like rock. We be melt away because we take side with wax. Why? Because wax is easy. Easy to mold and clean and this and that and, you know, high class, put it that way. And you put a little toy, sculpture, whatever, make other wax, you just take a second, you make it beautiful and easy, and you set it there out in the sun before you know it became flat. And you get down and dirty with clay, muddy, and so on, and sticky, whatever it is, and, and you make it, you, it's not as fun and easy with um, wax, this is dirty and hard and so on and sometimes smelly. I have a lot of experience with dirt. <laughs> I know some dirt smell, oh no, better than another. Better which way? Uh, that to be discussed. The more mineral, the more vitamin, the more uh, fertilizers, the better smell it is. But that clay, though it's hard, maybe dirty, ugly, dirty, whatever it is, in that clay, the result of that clay will become strong and hard under the same sun, the same light, the same heat. So be careful. It's not God the one who changed his mind. We the one who changed our mind in the plans of God, in the path of God. So go back to our church, go back to the concept of who we are in the body of Christ, or in the concept and doctrine of the people of God. We 
see here, must have two things. At least we draw application from him. We must have the spirit to praise God. We may have to, we must have the spirit to praise God in united, supportive, in one body way, whether respect or need or both. Look for your calling. Look for who you are in the body of Christ, in, in, in the blessing of God, and fulfill that. If you are called to lead, lead with all your might. Take the lead. The word take the lead here in the original text means you go to war at it. You lose, loosen up your hair. <laughs> the warrior loosen up a hair and wield a sword and go at it. Two, lead and protect your people. And if you find yourself, I'm, you know, I'm no warrior, I'm a peasant, I'm a villager, I'm a farmer, I'm a whatever it is, and then be a good one. I'm going to provide food and supply to my warrior, go to war, then supply food the best you know how. Willingly. Some of you say, uh, you know, I'm both. I'm protecting, I'm leading to it, and at the same time, I'm cooking, I'm providing, I'm growing, whatever, and then do both. But you have to do it willingly. Find yourself who you are, your calling today, and commit to it. For example, if you call, you enjoy biology or chemistry or math or numbers, fulfill that passion, do your best. Do your best. Circumstantially, sometimes you love art, you love music, you love that. You love it, you know you're called to be a musician, whatever. But at the circumstance that you're in, uh, um, the time that you are now, you need food. You need food, <laughs> you need money to pay for your bill, and do food first, and do flute later. Food go before flute. Without food, you cannot play flute. Play flute without food, you won't play flute. You won't even have the strength to blow air in that flute. You don't even have that flute because you have to sell it to buy food. So, find your passion, your calling, in life, in the body of Christ, do your best. Passionately, willingly. One. Two, do all of this in the main mission to praise, to bless, to honor God and God only, even in the midst of the pagan. <coughs> Verse four and five. We have to get going. As much as we think about one another is a good thing, as much as we think about evangelism to the outside is a good thing, you must turn your attention, your spirit, your soul to the Lord God and talk to him directly and personally and him and him alone. You understand what I'm saying? It's good to care, to love, to communicate, to fellowship with one another. It's good to evangelize. All of that's good. But nothing compared to the ultimate calling for you to worship, to communicate, to commune with God and God alone. You understand? The illustration Jesus said, you follow me, you must hate the world. You must hate your mother. Yeah, I do that already. No, not that kind of hate. You must hate your father. Yes, do that. No, no, I don't mean that. You hate your mother and your father and your dad. And your grandfather. You must hate them. I'm joking. You must hate your husband. <laughs> you must hate your wife, your kid, your brother and sister, everybody, even your life. Isn't that the, uh, Jesus is the, the, the prince of love? The prince of love, the prince of peace, the God of love. How can we teach hate? No. By comparison, the love that you devote to God make the love you have for the normal, noble love that you ought to have, including your life, turn worse than pale turn almost 
like hatred. So that is the concept that we devote ourselves, commit our life for one another, for the Church of God, and we commit to evangelize all of that. However, that quickly stop. Immediately, you turn your devotion to give honor and, and respect to God. Lord, you are the only person in my life. Because when you went out from Sire, you marched from the region of Eden. The earth quaked, trembled, heaven dropped. The mountain quakes even the mountain, the Mount Sinai before you, Lord God. You are the God of Israel. You talk about the devotion, the respect, the honor to this almighty God who's so caring, so loving, but at the same time, he is the majestic, powerful, powerful individual. We, human beings, even Christian, lose track our perspective, the, the view and the truth of who God is. That's why we treat him as, as a buddy buddy, just like, you know, like um, Jesus, the, uh, what, the superstar. No, we are to love, to be friendly, to be, he's our friend, he's a brother, and so forth. But he is more than that. He's more than our Savior. He is our Lord. We are to worship him and him alone. And that perspective clearly bring us our position in the body of Christ, in the hand of God, in the community of God, and the living and the application, rightly so, because we worship him. Now that we worship him, we go back to proclaim the gospel in front of this world of glamorous, the world of power, the world of vicious. Cut the road, fiercely, confidently. Why? Because we have the right perspective of who our God is. Now that we have the right perspective of who our God is, we can face the world, can face the world that I personally, my family, our family, and us, all of us, know how, what it means to face the world of ugliness to hurt us. Whether we're Christian or not, they like to hurt us because of power and money. And we can stand another day. We can stand strong. So when problem hit, think about who our God is not, who the problem, what the problem is. Who they are, don't do that. And then another effect, result, who a God is, we can rightly so commit ourselves to serve that God, to serve that church with our life. And we can commit ourselves to serve the God that we understand to serve the church willingly with humble heart because we know our position and we know our blessing. If we apply all of that, the church of Jesus Christ, our Lord, he said that, I know we, um, we time's up, I'm expired already. Uh, I'm quoting, and you know too. When Jesus said, Matthew 16, 18, he said that, I will build my church, and my church will not be destroyed no matter what, even death. Death is a most powerful entity and power that can take down anything and everything. Once you die, it's over. But with Jesus and with this church, even death, even supposed to be over, cannot be over for you. Cannot be over for my church, cannot be over for my people, my children, my followers. This is a conclusion here I would like to make. Understand who God is from divine, from God from heaven perspective down to us. He cover, he protect, he promise. 
There's nothing can touch us. Nothing can touch his church. If nothing can touch his church, since nothing can touch his church according to the Bible, which is solid, according to the history, the record, we see that God proved his point that the church of God still stand and forever stand. Thirdly, we can see that we can witness that in our own self, our own soul, our own life, how ugly, how sinful we are, deserve nothing but how to stand because God church, God grace, God love, and God who he is, and we stand. And you and I can be the judge of who we are. And we still stand, not only stand, we stand in bless. We still have a relationship with God. We still worship God. We still, we still love God as much as we went through so hellish with our own choice, with our own scheme, with our own intelligent, quote unquote, intelligent, what kind of intelligence? Our own uh, trickery, our own cleverness, and still stand here. That is, that is the ultimate, no, not even death can take down God's church and God's people because of his promise, because his word, because his grace, because his personhood is nothing about us. Number one, the Bible clearly proclaimed sin, silent, I mean, not silent, we done. We don't need to say anything. But we want to go further, who, those who cannot have the spirit in the building to read this as solid truth, look at history. The first fourth century I mentioned earlier could have just killed everything particularly related to Christianity and anything that related to the church. But no, even now, 21st century, there are so many slaughter, or so many attacks to destroy Jesus, God, church, the church of God still stand. Not so many, some still stand. It's hard to find real church, real Christian, I know that, but there are some. Praise God. Thirdly, this is ultimate truth, ultimate test, ultimate testimony, ultimate proof that soul, like our soul, my soul, your soul, you can just, Im you can just examine how precious is God's gift to protect you from yourself, from your sin. How precious, how great, how amazing, how miraculous that God protect me from my sin, my soul. This is so, so much to talk about that part, but ultimately I testify God church, God grace, God blessing, God forgiveness to a soul like me. And I am sick and tired of it. Me. I'm glad with God's grace and I cannot wait to go home. But I'm telling them they have mission. So we can understand that. When Jesus said, you're not going to die, my children are not going to die. My chosen one, not going to die. Even hell, even death cannot stop you. And that is an ultimate comfort, honor, and privilege that we not only receive with gladness, thankfulness, but with humility, with prayerful and grateful and praiseful heart to the one who made it all happen. With his own purchase, with his own blood and promise. And I, I am thankful for personal salvation, stand again my hellish nature, sinful nature, and then the church of God I'm in. And then, ultimately, honestly, how much your devotion to praise and thank that God. Just look at that. Not to say you stop going to school, work, fun, all that, it's fine. But what is your core nature? Praising that God, thanking that God. He said, basically, no matter what, nothing can destroy my church, therefore can it destroy you because you are in my church. Not, cannot destroy you, no, destroy my church. Get it right, get it right. It's not about, I promise you, you were special, nothing gonna touch you, that man sent her. No, Jesus said, nothing cannot touch my church. Basically, nothing cannot touch me, because the church is him. The church is him, he's not the church, the church is him, I know. Is that it? No. God is God, Jesus is Jesus. 
the church is his body. His body is not the church. Are you confused? Yeah. Good. I'm confused too. But my point is, nothing can touch the church of God because he is God. And this is property, his belonging. And we so happen to be by his grace to be in that church. To be in a universal church, in this local church. That's why we stand. Therefore, take comfort. Be blessed. Be grateful. Be put in this way. Be glad. Be happy that we are God children, God church, God the redeemed soul. Be blessed. Be grateful. Be grateful. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. If you are blessed, grateful to God, to what you have, you naturally to think. The first one, obviously, relate to God. Thank God. Praise God. Two more things for sure. Examine yourself today. You will die for one another. You will die for one another. And you will submit to one another willingly. The peace, the love, the unity is just so powerful, but so smooth, so gentle, so strong like a sword, but so shiny, so beautiful as a shiny sword should be. The beauty and the strength in one entity and one weapon and one sword is just like phenomena, the concept. If you are indeed a child of God, you praise God. That's ultimate number one. You thank God, of course. But outside of that, there's two more things. One another, you would die for one another, you would love one another, you would protect one another, you would do everything to preserve and to reserve and to protect and to nourish, to, to enrich your unity, the body of Christ, not tear each other down to love, to respect, to forgive, to edify. Watch your thought, your step daily. Thirdly, of course, one too, too, too high and this too. <laughs> hmm. Just play. This helped me to remember. This to God, this to one another, and this to the down word. If you truly a child of God, blessed by God, nothing can destroy you, no matter what, even death. That's why Christian, even we die, we have no, we're not a loser. We're still victorious because we that death cannot stop us. We go to God. That's another aspect for funeral. That's different. Number two, one another, but number three, because of this two, we go to number three. You see yourself constantly, passionately, powerfully evangelize, tell the world, even in front of the kings and princes. You will tell them, you will pray, not to aggressively go so stupid and go to argue with people what you're supposed to be studying or working. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your life is full of music, your life is full of praise and sings, and you do not walk around singing either. The point is, you will be joyfully, beautifully praising God in everything you do in front of the world. That is the best proclamation of the gospel testimony of who you are to your God. Personally, alone, corporately, you and your family, your Christian family, your church family are so united that the world, you can sing this to the world because you are one body, you love one another. Number one, because you praise God, you can sing to the world. Because you praise God, you love God, you can love one another. This is the result, the principle, the element that make one body, one church of God, or a church of God, or a family, or a relationship become strong and forever. You can apply that to everything. If you were to think, young men and women, think about future, you know, like four more, five more years, or whatever, you know, a long time until you're done schooling, until you become established financially, you know, and not like you jump into getting married, anything like that. You know? But you think about that. 
is that what is a successful family, successful marriage, and successful life? You need to understand that if you want that relationship to be forever blessed, you need to, you individually, start first, live your life for God and live your life for that person. You can, you can answer yes to those who, that relationship, yes. If you're not living your life for God, maybe you, you will be willing to live your life for that person that you in love with. It, let me tell you, it may work, but it may not. Most likely not, because when the love die, when the bell and whistle, when the honeymoon's over, you're like, oh man, what a mistake. Body, beauty, and strength will give you will face disappointment. But if, but if you commit to God, to honor God no matter what, your commit to that person will forever live. Therefore, that relationship. So, apply to that, for example, apply to that, to your church, to commitment family or business or relations, personal relationship, you must make sure you understand, one, your life to live for God. Commit to God completely, understand your position, you don't deserve, but now that you have the privilege, you forever thank God. And if once you do that, you can commit to that person or commit to that entity, commit to the church or family or business, whatever, you can. And that will go to business partner and so on. If you can praise God personally and you praise God together with the business partner, you can count on your business will be blessed. In personal relationship, the same thing. You want to know the future. I'm not a teller. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a prophet, but I can say this. If you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, if you love that person with all your heart, um, like yourself, you and your, that relationship will be the blessed relationship humanly possible on earth because the rest is cursed now. The rest is cursed no matter what you have, what you put on, what you try to work out, your physical form, look, and beauty, and education, and vacation, whatever, it's going to die. So, application and application, I know I'm, uh, I need to stop. Pastor Dave, help me to stop this. <laughs> I was supposed to for something, but I'm just... Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for setting in our minds uh, what we need for life and godliness, Lord, what we need to navigate our lives, no matter where we are, no matter how old we are, no matter what situations we're facing, Lord, that, that we are always to remember who you are and have a clear view of that, Lord, that, that when you approach literally the heavens and the earth shake at your presence, Lord, that you are so worthy of our praise, so worthy of our praise of our lives and of our lips. You're so worthy. And Lord, in contrast to that, Lord, we, we shake at your presence because Lord, we know that we are very much unworthy. But Lord, by your grace, uh, we are called your children. Yes. By your grace, we have restored fellowship with you, that we have our sins forgiven. But Lord, we are still creatures who are very much prone to wander. And in the presence of those who many would esteem great kings and princes, the, the high people of this world, Lord, we are often starstruck by them. But Lord, help us to remember that, that even they like us, are sinners in need of, of your forgiveness. That our song to you shouldn't be changed at all, no matter who is in our presence. Amen. To know, Lord, that as high above us as they may be or seem to be, yes. Lord, that they, like us, are infinitely beneath you, mm. and that they, their knees need to bow before you as well. Lord, we thank you that you have a care to save sinners, whether low or high, and Lord, that we are among them. Amen. And so, Lord, with this view of you in mind, Lord, may we go about our lives 
in a, in a manner that really does declare your praises to others, Amen. no matter who it is. And Lord, may we, as we are desiring to be a faithful church and faithful members of it, Lord, may we go about things the way that you have declared that, that leaders should lead in the church in humility and that those that follow would follow the leaders as they follow Christ. Amen. And in all of us, in whatever place we are in life, Lord, we ask that this would be what is at the front of our minds as we think about decisions, as we think about what to do, and so that whatever we do, Lord, we would do it all for your glory. Amen. We pray for your strength as is often the case we go from here and are challenged in that very area. Lord, help us to remember, Lord, that that's not by accident, Lord, that you are sharpening us, that you're preparing us for a lifetime of faithfulness. Amen. And Lord, may we be humble to be sharpened by you. Amen. We pray that we would truly be a church that honors you, that, that brings your gospel uh, everywhere that we go. And Lord, for this, we can just thank you for the privilege yes. and give you all the glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May we go in the grace of God.